What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So while I'm waiting for my frame to get done at the sandblasting, I figured it was a good time to tackle my front axle. So we got a ton of stuff we got to do to this thing. We got gears, lockers, brakes. We got to fully weld the axle in, meaning the truss, all the brackets, everything on this axle is just tack welded. So we need to weld all that. First things I think I'm going to do before I start tearing the axle down is I want to pull the truss back up. There's only a couple tacks holding it on right now. I want to pull it off. I want to give the inside of this truss a paint job just because it is going to be subject to obviously rust. The whole thing is bare metal. I definitely want to get some paint on the inside. So I'm going to use Steel It. Steel It I've been using for a while now and I have been loving it. It's awesome. It works great for like a weld through paint. You can paint, you can weld right on top of it and actually actually welds really nice compared to any other weld through primers I've tried. So we got to do that. We got to grind the whole housing down where we need to weld because there's still a lot of paint on it. And then we want to get the truss back on after we paint the inside of it. And we got to fully weld in the entire truss, all the brackets. We do, I think I'm going to wait to do some of the welding around the center section just because that is a cast material. It's actually called nodular iron, which really, you really need to heat that up to about 400 degrees before you can really weld into it. So I think I'm gonna wait till I have the housing bare. There's no seals, no gears, no oil, no nothing in the housing before I actually take a flamethrower to this thing and warm it up. So that is the game plan. First things first, like I said, get this truss off here, get it painted on the inside, and then get the back on, get some of the welding done, and then we can move on to tearing this axle completely down. We gotta pull hubs off, axles out, gear set out. Like I said, we got gears, a locker. We got a ton of stuff going into this thing. So we got a ton of work ahead of us.
All right, guys, we are pretty much done welding. We're done MIG welding, at least. We got all of the brackets welded in. I cut some more gussets for that. Got that nice and tied in. And the last thing we really gotta do is weld the truss to the center section and then weld these shock mounts into the outer seas on both sides and then i guess this track bar mounts got a little bit now these seas as far as i know are forged steel so they're very easy to weld to we do need to preheat and let that that slowly cool like we do with a cast but it's a lot stronger weld to forged steel so that's not a problem the main problem is welding to this center section now this is i believe it's called nodular iron it's pretty close to a cast iron material but it's got a little bit different makeup to the metal so you got to treat it a little bit different now i have seen people mig weld that without any issues and i did throw a mig weld right down here without any preheat it was a little bit warmed up because i was welding around here but no preheat no uh post like slow slow cool down or anything it didn't crack it didn't do nothing it looks really good but everybody says to weld that with nickel so i got i just picked this up on amazon this is uh, NI99, this is nickel rod. This is actually a stick welding rod. I only got five of them, so <laughs> hopefully hopefully that's enough. But I haven't uh, stick welded forever. Um, we can stick weld on my TIG welder. We just got a switch right there that we can switch to stick weld. So we're gonna hook that up. Honestly, I haven't stick welded since like high school. I think I have, yeah, I do have some uh some other rod down here i'm gonna grab some of this and just grab some scrap steel mess around with it a little bit see if i can get dialed in on how to even stick weld and then what we're gonna do is i got a big weed burner for the propane uh tank i'm gonna heat up this whole center section basically we want to get to about 400 500 degrees somewhere in that range we want to keep it around four to five hundred degrees as we're welding the whole thing so constantly checking it if it cools off we're going to grab the burner again heat that up we're going to do the same thing with outer seas heat that up to about four or five hundred degrees weld it and then we're going to wrap the entire axle in a welding blanket and let it slowly cool for like i don't know 12 hours however long it takes to get down to like ambient temp so that's the game plan um i really wish i could mig weld it because i'm you know i can actually mig weld um if i guess if i run out of my nickel rod i might try it also people have used uh, i believe it's 309 i do have some uh stainless to mild yeah 309 l um i have that label as a mild to a stainless filler but people use that for welding cast to mild steel as well so we could also try to tig weld it and see how that goes but that is a lot slower process i want to try to stick weld or mig weld if possible i think if i get it hot enough i think i can make a mig weld work like i said i did put one over here and it looks perfectly fine
All right, we are all welded up and we got this thing wrapped up. I'm gonna completely let this cool. I don't know however long it takes till the axle comes down to like 70 degrees or so. And then we'll unwrap it, we'll check it out. Hopefully none of these welds will crack. This is where, if they're gonna crack, they're gonna crack on cool down because as that center section shrinks and the truss shrinks when it cools off, they shrink at different rates and that can cause cracking. Now what I did do is I started I did like a, a smaller bead. This is like, I don't know what size this is, but it's really small. It doesn't go very far at all. So what I ended up doing, and it welded like absolute trash. It like didn't even look like a weld. It looked like popcorn BS, I don't know. Either way, I couldn't get that to lay even close to a bead. So what I did is I kind of ran that first, and then I cleaned it up, wire brushed it, chipped all the slag off, and then I went over the top of that with the MIG welder. And I have seen a few people recommend doing that, just kind of butter in with the nickel into the actual center section and then go over the top of that with something else while it's still hot so hopefully nothing will crack nothing is cracked yet i'm hoping hoping that nothing will crack the next thing we got to do is weld on our high steer arms these weld on to the knuckles here so i'm going to pull the ball joints out i'm going to sandblast these knuckles just so they're nice and clean and then we'll kind of use the same procedure with the heat and weld it on wrap them up keep them hot as long as we can and hopefully those will go i don't actually i, I got to do a little bit of research i think these are forged as well so they should weld really nice when i welded the c's on that they, it welded like mild steel so i'm really hoping that is forged as well it's going to make welding those on much much easier All right, it's now the next day. Let's open this bad boy up and see what we're looking like. Hopefully, these welds are still in one piece. Let's check this side first. This side was just the uh, knuckle here, or the NC, which I figured is gonna look perfectly fine. Look at that weld, yeah, that looks great. But what I'm really worried about is along the truss up here. Look at that, actually. I don't see, I don't see any cracking going on. Let's check this side. It actually looks really good. I don't see any cracks at all. Well, I guess we nailed it guys. I guess doing the nickel first and then a pass while, I don't know, maybe you can just MIG weld it because I didn't do, for in this top section from here to here, I didn't do any nickel. That is just MIG weld. And you can see I just did short like inch bursts of weld and it looks really good actually. I don't see, like I said, I don't see any cracks at all. Now, I know you're gonna ask why I didn't completely weld everything in on, that's, that one's actually just a big gap there. But I didn't weld like, I guess just along that. This side's pretty much all welded in except that big hole there. But honestly, a lot of people don't even weld the center section just because, I mean, obviously it's a very strong axle to begin with. Two, with having the truss going over and tying the two tubes together, strengthens everything. A lot of people don't even recommend welding into that center section but i figure i figure it's worth the extra strength there but like i said it's probably not even really necessary so that's why i didn't bother trying to burn everything in we just got the main kind of just wrapped around the top just to tie the tubes 
and the truss and everything just pretty much tie everything together so you can see over here we got the c tied in with the shock mounts to the tube and the truss on both sides so everything is kind of tied together should be very very strong All right, let's have a look and see how these knuckles turned out. It's been all night, so these are nice and cooled off. All right, let's see. Looks like our welds are still there. They're not cracked at all. Let's flip it over. Oh yeah, look at that. Looks good. Looks just like when we left it. Perfect. All right guys, we are completely done welding. I am happy that nothing cracked. We didn't get a single crack anywhere. So I am very stoked with that. Now I do have a question for you guys. So my wife is back at work for three days a week now. I do have two kids, so I do have the kids. So I'm not out in the shop working as much as I used to be able to. I'm curious, would you guys rather have videos that are kind of shorter or like two part videos like this one is with like, you know, the tear down of the axle, the welding, and then the next video we're gonna be painting everything and putting it all back together. Would you rather have that more often, like more often videos that are a little bit shorter or wait like a week and a half, sometimes even two weeks that it takes me to actually complete a project and then have the whole video, a longer video and like one whole episode for each project, if that makes any sense. What would you guys rather see? I'm kind of leaning towards kind of cutting it up a little bit more. I'm not gonna go super short, but like this axle rebuild, cut it in two parts. I, I feel like, you know, 15, 20 minutes per episode, get these videos out to you guys like four or five days versus like 10 to 12 days. So go drop a comment, let me know what you guys think. Well, anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up here, guys. The next video, like I said, we gotta paint everything, we gotta set our gears up, our lockers up, and we gotta throw, I haven't actually showed you guys what we're doing. So what we got, like I said, a ton of parts going into this axle that we gotta tackle in the next video. So once we get everything painted, we'll throw this thing together and we'll be done with this front axle for good. Well anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Why don't you go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.